Uh, good evening, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. I'm just here this morning because I wanted to make another video for you. This video is going to have a title, something like Looking for Outliers in the Capital House Price Competition. And what I've done is I've taken the Amy's House Price data set and I've um, solved it. I mean, I've made predictions on it. But in addition to that, I'm also looking for outliers because I think it's a, a good idea to look for outliers. And I'm using Isolation Forest to look for the outliers. And then that's a good a good uh, fraud detection by looking for outliers. Not that I'm saying fraud was committed on this house price data set. It's just that maybe it was a really big house or a really nice house or something like that but we're still going to look for outliers and i'm going to go over the program and show you how to do it now i say i created this program on google colab but i've saved it to my github account so um what i've done is um you got your amy's house prices so I don't really have a problem statement per se. I just put on the problem statement, locate any outliers in Kaggle Amy's house price data set. And acknowledgements, the Amy's housing data set was compiled by Dean DeCock for use in data science education. It's an incredible alternative for data sets, for data scientists looking for a modern price and expanded version of the often cited Boston housing data set. So the first thing that I did was I imported the libraries that I thought I would need. So I imported this SYS, imported SciPy, imported NumPy, Matplotlib, PyPlot, Pandas, SKLearn, and Seaborn. So those are all the libraries that I thought I would need or might need. So I imported them. The next thing I did was the only thing that I'm calling up at this time is the train data set because I'm not, we'll see, but I don't think I'm doing the test data set. And the reason why is because um, I don't have the outcome. I don't have the, um, the results for the test data set and we're looking for outliers and you need to have the sell price. And since I don't have the sell price in the test data set, there's not really a whole lot of point in bringing it up. Although I suppose that if I really wanted to do it, then what I could have done was I could have taken the prediction and I could have added an extra column to the uh, test data set and called it sell price and I could have looked at outliers that way. But that was just simply a prediction. It wasn't the actual prices. And since I don't have the actual prices, I just decided that I would just use the train data set and nothing else. But we'll think about it. We'll think about doing the test data set at another point. So um, so now you see we've got our train. We've got our train data set. We've got our shape. We have... 1460 rows and 81 columns. So this was a really good good data set to use PCA on principal component analysis. But the uh, the sales price are in figures; they're not in um, classes. So uh, you would need to have it wouldn't work. Although they do have. Um, a component regression but I haven't studied that yet so uh, whenever I study the PCR I'll definitely use the Amy's house price data set for that but until I learn it I can't do it so we're just using isolated forests at this time so you see that there's loads of columns um, 81 columns to be exact. And the next thing we do is we 
describe our sales price so you can see a count a mean a standard minimum 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent max and then what we have is we have a, a disk plot so you can see the disk plot which most of the houses are between 100,000 and 200,000 and then it tends to taper off and you do have some outliers past 700,000. So we've just got another one. We've got a, a histogram of the sales price, just a different way of looking at it. And then the sales price was a bit skewed, so what they did was we did a logarithm. And when we did our logarithm, we just moved it towards the center a little bit. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're doing a plot. So we're plotting using it on the greater live GR LIV area. And we do a plot with that on the sales price and see how that works. And you see that there are a few little outliers there. And this is one I did. This was just a little violin plot that I did, but it didn't work out very well because um, the violin, there were so many prices to choose from that the violin part didn't really work out that well. But that is your violin plot for the solutions, the sales price, if you want to see them. So now we've got the total basement square foot on the sales price. So you can see what that looks like. And you can see that we do have a few outliers there. And now we have box plots. So you can see of overall quality. So the better the overall quality is, the higher the price is going to be. And we do have a few outliers there as well. Now we've got a heat map. And so this heat map talks about how the numeric values fit in with the sales price. And so if you're good at heat maps and you have a good understanding of how heat maps correlate to the sales price, that's something good to know. And now what we're doing is we're going to check for any null values. And since this is such a, it's got so many columns, we had to use like some coding to get the null values. But we only checked for the null values in the train file. And so we decided to impute all of these null values. I personally would have liked to have used the iterative imputer, but the iterative imputer only works on numeric data it doesn't work on categorical data so i just imputed it a different way and there's lots of different ways that you can impute your missing values but just for this particular exercise i did it this way so we check for any null values to make sure we didn't miss anything and no we don't have any more null values so now what we do is we want to print off a list of all the object files. And all of the object files, what we do is we ordinal encode them. Because um, they have, well, definitely for PCA, they have to be converted to um, numeric values. And for the models, except for cat boost, all of the models want to see numeric values. So all of the categorical values were ordinal encoded to make them numeric. So we look at the train file and all of these columns are going to be either integer or float. They're all going to be numeric. Now what we do is we define our x and y variables. So y is train dot sales price dot values and x is train drop and then you're going to drop a whole lot of columns and what i had done previously is i had done feature selection and whenever i did feature selection uh, those were the columns 
that I dropped because they sort of had a negative effect on my accuracy. But there's lots of ways you can do feature selection as well. So we check our shape. Our shape now has 64 columns. And then we train, we split our X file up for training and validating and our it's using train test split. So we use X and Y, test size equals 0.1, random state equals one, and then we check our column sizes as well. And so we make a pipeline. And when we made the pipeline, we scaled the information. We put it on a standard scaler, but then we also use gradient boost regressor as our estimator, as our model. And that gave us a 9.96% 9, 9 accuracy, which was pretty good. And then we predicted upon our validation set, and that gave us a 95.21% accuracy, which is pretty good. And so this is a data frame that we created where we can compare the predicted values against the actual values if you would like to see them. So now what we decided to do is we decided to use isolation forests to look for outliers. So we defined our model of isolation forest. So model equals isolation forest, in estimators equals 400, max samples equals auto, Con contamination equals float 0 0.01 and max features equals one. So what you can do is you can set your contamination for any value that you want. So I decided that the contamination was going to be 1%. So we're looking for 1%. And then we do our isolated, we make another column called scores. And that equals module decision function train sale price, and then another model called anomalies. So you can hear, see here at the very end, we've got scores and anomalies. So if it's one, it means it's okay, and if it's negative one, it means it's an anomaly. And so point well, ten one percent of the values of the sales price are going to be anomalies. So we do an anomaly equals train folk train anomaly equals negative one. So what you're doing is you're trying to find everything that equals negative one because if it equals negative one, then it's an anomaly. So, um, so there we go. We've got our anomalies, and it's 15 rows. And now what we're doing is we're looking for outliers. And I decided that outliers are going to be anything greater than $500,000. And so we had nine, nine houses that were greater than $500,000. So I just said those were outliers, that that's what we were looking for. And you can see that on the anomaly, um, there you go, it's all a negative one. And you can see that the sales price is anywhere from $500,000 to $755,000. Okay, and then now we check our accuracy. And our accuracy was 166, but that accuracy doesn't really matter because what I did was I just asked for everything over $500,000. And then when we went and we set our model, we said it was going to be 1% of the model. So the accuracy is not really that important at this stage, but I decided to go ahead and put it in. So that concludes it for this demonstration. I'm going to be making a blog post on this this problem in the morning and when I make the blog post I will leave the code for my github account so if you want to um,
to look on my GitHub account, then you'll have to read the blog post. So that concludes this presentation. If you like my work, please like, subscribe, and share. Um, if you want to leave a donation, I've got my email address for my PayPal account in the description box down below. I don't have enough subscribers to monetize, so I have to ask for donations. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I look forward to making more videos and blog posts for you.